the competitiveness advantage, topicality, the STEM counter plan, the wages DA, the India counter plan. <laughs> yep, absolutely. India relations advantage, competitiveness advantage, topicality, STEM counter plan, the one with conditionality bad, wages disad, the India counter plan. China and Russia, they don't have good defense. This just says an uh, old piece of evidence doesn't assume border skirmishes in the world. The United States economy plays and maintains and visa points. Democracy, they have one card, says democracy don't solve war. They've conceded Liliana's fantastic argument about how it solves famine, war, terrorism, diseases, all sorts of human rights violations. That's a conceded impact. He only extended across a non unique argument overcoming less democratic now, which means it's try or die to solve all the things. Extend across the H 1Bs don't matter. This card is about Trump and Modi. Our argument is we will concede that Trump is kind of a jackhole. Our argument is that we need to build relations with the actual people of India through things like H-1B so that Trump can't screw it all up. That's an internal link game that we claim. He says India wouldn't backfire. Yes, they would. They are having skirmishes. They have a asymmetric nuclear policy, which means it only takes Pakistan acting a fool. They say democracy doesn't cause war. Yes, it does. That's dyad evidence. It talks about how democratic peace theory, the more democratic are, the more they are likely to change. Citizens don't want conflict, so the more power the citizens have, the more likely they are fight. It also decreased the amount of terrorism and diseases that happen. Plus, Kasparov is super qualified. He's also a human rights winning ward sub. Unlike Nick, when he stopped being competitive, he did lots of good stuff with his life. Now, Competitiveness. <laughs> 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 Hegemony is absolutely fantastic. Ace of point, all of their evidence about how Trump is going to act a fool. That is our argument. That is why we need a strong economy so that he doesn't piss people off and ultimately cause a whole bunch of conflicts. That's conceded by a bunch of a framing issue. All of their transition stuff is from 2011. All of their Trump stuff is from 2008. A lot happened in those seven years, which means ultimately we control a controlling internal link into that. Our argument is not military power. It's the ability of our economy and our technology to keep people from going to war and starting conflicts with us. He, she says it'll be a peaceful transition with the allies. It's a 2011 piece of evidence. Our argument is that U.S. power projection decreased wars. That's our brands in 17 evidence says we would be able to do it and it would be peaceful. She says hedge decline is inevitable because of peers insufficient. Our argument is that hedge decline is inevitable in a world of Trump unless we have the economic strength to maintain the lead over all of our allies. She says it's concentrated because there's a long-term buildup. The other guys, au contraire, offshoring will be absolute wars. Our evidence is the only one that assumes Trump says going offshore will act to make him act of foolish, but if we can keep it here, we give him less things to lash out about until we replace him in 2020. Plus, Trump is just a tweeter, not a fighter. Stokes 18. Notwithstanding his often bombastic statement, Trump's national foreign security policy is characterized by a greater deal of continuity than is commonly assumed. He has increased U.S. military commitment to Afghanistan by abandoning a timeline-based strategy in favor of conditions-based strategy. Trump has maintained U.S. security commitments in East Asia while this is still developing national security strategy. Thus, characterized by Alton Brash and the rough rhetoric. They've also conceded the technology internally. That increasing technology allows us to solve conflicts internally. Top calorie. Defining issue in this debate, their only card that says that non-immigrant visa there is a quote from Jeff Flake, who's a Republican senator who is talking about how, hey, this is a non-immigrant visa because they're afraid of the backlash. We quote legal evidence that says that ultimately our counterinterpretation for Res and 10 is a legal quote from the Department of Homeland Security that says it includes those four categories. There's a four <coughs> apps will go for four impacts. Ace of point, they over limit. The case list is absolutely incoherent. He also talks about how ripping pins from their families, that's an illegal immigration thing, which means his only example of something we should talk about does that except across our CISA point that education about visas is really important because it's only four categories. If we only learn about citizenship, we ultimately wouldn't be able to do it. Extend across reasonability, good is good enough. The judge shouldn't have to intervene. We're reading really good cards that say that, yes, legal immigration includes non-immigrant illegal immigrant visas, which means they're not people who are coming over here to stay. They're coming over people to work, but they still fall across their categories. If they say legal position is the impact that he makes at the bottom when he increases his increase, we'll concede legal position. They have political in 2010 evidence. We have good stuff like the Congressional Research Service. This is uh, Waste and 12. 
The scope of legal immigration includes permanent admissions, e.g. employment-based, family-based immigrants, and temporary admissions, e.g. guest workers and foreign students, which means ultimately we would do it. We think we do meet their argument because it's a stepping stone. That doesn't mean everything could lead to as examples. It's that many people who want to become citizens start by getting an H-1B visa, which means ultimately we meet their argument. Conditionality, bad will extend an ace point strategy to to ac wasn't able to spend time. Visa point causes bad debate because the one in R just reads a whole bunch of things. It's 123, which is the total number of two in R's. We have the answer they conceded the deterrence of voting issue. It says in round is fine. That's fine. In round, they had a 123 count with. They said neg flex and good, 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 good debate. It's hard debate. It should be hard for them as well, which means there wouldn't will concede that substance trade off stinks. That means that they shouldn't be able to win on topicality because ultimately we weren't able to have as much substance because they had to spend so much time answering his topicality arguments. Wages, can, they've conceded all of the reasons why we improve the economy, which means Trump is less likely to have to fight for the Trump denial, which is all their arguments. They will concede that their impact is compared to that because ultimately he is not a person who's likely to lash out. He's a person who's likely to tweet, but it doesn't take across our impact because we would do it. Any counter plan. The plan is necessary. Ace point offshoring is happening in the status quo. They've conceded that 700,000 Indians are going back. Between. It doesn't solve the relationship. Peace of point is the litmus test, not between Modi and Trump, but between all of the businesses that happen in the issue. They conceded the two AC cards that they're large structural issues that H1B is to do it. Plus that links the heads back argument is really important here. Either they don't solve the Indian relations because they don't improve U.S. standing or they hedge bad as a net benefit because they don't increase U.S. standing.